the S12, the S42, the S62 and the S70. Four awesome golf watches from Garmin and in today's video we're going to help you decide what's the perfect watch to take your game to the next level. Quick introductions of the watches and the S12 is the entry level watch from Garmin. It's got a black and white screen and it's operated by two buttons on either side. It's fast, easy and effective. The S42 is the mid-range, mid-price option from Garmin. It introduces the color touchscreen and advanced features like the club prompt. The S62 was the leading golf watch from Garmin for a long time. It introduced market-leading features like the virtual caddy, hole overviews, heart rate monitor and Gorilla Glass on the front. And then the S70 came along and improved on all the weak points from the S62. It's lighter, it fits better on the wrist. The screen is higher resolution, it's got a better battery life, and the virtual caddy features have been taken to the next level. So now that we've got the introductions out of the way, let's take a look at the tech specs. The S12 weighs in at 1.2 ounces, it's got a 0.9 inch by 0.9 inch screen, and it's the only one that's not a color touch screen. It does an amazing 30 hours in GPS mode on a single charge, and you can pick this up for $150 to $200. The S42 weighs in at 1.5 ounces, it's got a 1.2 inch color touch screen, it does 15 hours in GPS mode on a single charge, and you can pick this up for $250. The S62 weighs in at 2.2 ounces, it's got a 1.3 inch color touch screen, it does 20 hours on a single charge in GPS mode, and you can pick this up for between $450 and $500. The S70 weighs in at 2 ounces, it's got a 1.4 inch color touch screen. It also does 20 hours on a single charge in GPS mode. And you can pick this one up for $650 to $700. So let's take a look at what each of these watches has to offer. Now all of these watches are going to give you distances to the front, middle and the back of the green. Distances to various layup options and various hazards on each hole. And they're also going to save all your data on the Garmin Golf app so you can measure your progress and see how much better you're getting at the game week by week and month by month. So looking at the S12, and this is the entry level watch, it's got a black and white screen and you operate it with two buttons either side. It's fast, effective and easy to use. No getting lost in the technology with the S12. This one costs $200, but you can get it on sale for $150. And if you can get it for that price, it's a real bargain. Now, the one thing that's missing from the S12 is the club prompt feature. So if you hit any of these other watches, it's going to ask you for the club you hit. And then you get the full data and rich visual representation on the Garmin Golf app after your round. This is still going to give you nearly all the data, but just not how you perform with each club and the progress that you make with each club. You can change that by adding some CT10 sensors but well, that obviously increased the cost considerably. The S42 is the mid-tier, mid-priced option. It introduces the color touchscreen. It's heavier at 1.2 ounces, and it's got a small band and a small face, so this is gonna suit a smaller wrist size or a female player. It comes in three colors, white, rose gold, and black. I think the rose gold is gonna suit the female players, White is unisex and then the black is going to suit male players more. The extra thing that you obviously get with this is the color touch screen and the club prompt. So you get the full array of data in the Garmin Golf app afterwards. Um, but the one thing that's missing from the S42 is the whole overview. So you can not pinpoint the position to any point on the hole that you're playing and get the distance to that point. Now the big thing that the S62 brought to the party is the whole overview. You can get the position to any point on the course get the distance to that point and the remaining distance to the green. This also brought in the virtual caddy, which is gonna use all your historic data to suggest a club view to hit um, at any position on the course. And that's not to be faded, it is quite a good feature. You get the heart rate monitor, which brings the fitness to the next level. Also the pinpointing feature is gonna show you the direction to the pin at all times, which is very handy on the dog legs. Now this one is a little bit heavier than the S70 at 2.2 ounces and it's a little bit chunky from this angle as well. So it feels a little bit like a computer on your wrist and the graphics aren't as good as the S70. Now the S70 brought the AMOLED screen to the party and it really is amazing. I can see the whole overview in rich graphics and I can get the point to any position on the hole very easily. We've also got the pinpointer function and the virtual caddy now takes wind and air pressure into consideration as well. 
This one also has bands that wrap around the wrist a lot more easily and it's just improved on all the weak points from the S62 making this the ultimate golf watch on the market and it's going to take a lot of beating from Garmin. So who should buy each watch? This one's going to be for the high handicapper that wants to improve at the game and it's for someone that just doesn't want to get lost in the technology on the course. A lot of us go to the course to get away from the technology. This is just fast and effective to get the data that you need and then just forget about it. Now the S42 is more stylish. It's gonna suit the female players a lot more and it's gonna suit maybe a mid handicapper who wants to track their club usage and how they're performing with each club on the Garmin Golf app. Obviously as well, if you don't wanna spend the full money on the S62 or the S70. Now the S62 has been almost completely replaced by the S70, which is better in almost every way, except it costs a bit more. So the only reason that you'd really be buying the S62 is because you can pick this up for $450, while the S70 costs between $650 and $700. But the S70 is better in almost every way, the operating system's even been changed and drastically improved with the S70. So if you're buying the S62, at this point, it's going to be primarily on price. And if you can pick it up gently used or secondhand, you might be able to get a good bargain on the S62. And it's still an excellent watch, just not as good as the King, which is the S70. Now the S70 has the best features, it's the best watch, it's the easiest to use and it's the most intuitive. The one downside of the S70 is that it's kind of distracting on the course and sometimes I feel myself constantly playing around with the watch when I go onto the course to kind of get away from the technology. So the two watches that I'd pick up and use out of the four on display here today is the S12 and the S70. And if I'm playing on my own and just trying to improve, then I'll use the S70 to get the most rich data available possible. But if I'm playing with friends and I don't want to get too distracted by a golf watch, I'll just pick up the S12 and I'll use the S12 on the round. So if I'm playing with other people as well, I don't really use the advanced stat tracking and all the fairways and regulation and all the club prompt. It gets very, very distracting. If I'm playing with friends, I'll just use this. Nice, easy, and simple to use. 